Welcome to our Heart Health Series. I'm Lisa Kim. Today we're gonna to talk about your heart, of course, but specifically heart failure. And to do that, we have the Chief of Heart Failure and Cardiac Transplantation here at Stanford, Dr. Jeff Tudorberg, who is also the President of the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplantation. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So tell us about heart failure. How does that occur? Well, it can be caused by a number of different things, but the end result is, is that your heart's not really able to pump blood to the organs that need it, and it causes you to hold on to fluids, which can make you swollen or breathless. Hearts become sicker because there are other components that come into play. So these are the other diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes or lung disease or kidney disease that often go along with some of these other diseases. So you're dealing with heart failure. So how are you trying to turn the tide in terms of treatment with these complex cases? I think one of the big things is sort of early recognition of heart failure and that it's become severe enough for us to take a look at somebody. And so we try to get out into the community to let people know that when they see certain signs, that that maybe is a time where they need to refer them to us to, to evaluate the patients. Typically, it's before we need to transplant them. So it gives us a little bit of time to make all the assessment that we need so we can figure out what the best thing for the patient is. So how does technology play a pivotal role in providing better patient care and treatment? I mean, we are in the backyard <laughs> of Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, so it has a huge role and it's, it's changing and it seems like it's changing almost every day. Uh, we have new things that we can use to diagnose patients to maybe see them a little bit sooner and understand their disease better. We have new therapies in terms of the technologies that we can use to maybe replace a heart valve or to support them with a heart pump prior to transplantation. And then we're developing new technologies to follow them afterwards to make things less invasive. Patients need biopsies after their transplant, and so we're substituting that with blood tests. So they just need to go to a lab and get their blood drawn instead of having to come all the way to the hospital. And so that's less burden on the patient and their families. How are those options expanding in terms of future therapies and treatments? I think there's becoming more and more options in terms of the, the kinds of transplants we do instead of maybe just needing a heart, some patients might need a heart lung or that may need a heart plus a kidney or a heart plus a liver and we're willing to consider those sorts of things. Uh, sometimes maybe they're too sick to get a heart transplant so they need a heart pump, what we call a left ventricular assist device. Mm -hmm. And so we can think about putting in one of those pumps to bridge them to transplant to allow them to recover to the point where they are then eligible for a heart transplant. How do you feel about being part of the legacy that Stanford performed the first adult heart transplant in the U.S.? I think it's very humbling to be part of that. Uh, Stanford has the longest history in the U.S. of doing adult heart transplants and was for a long time was the center that taught all the other centers how to do heart transplants and they took them back to their centers and then took heart transplant across the country. That being said, I think that there's still lots to do in the field of heart transplantation. There's things we can do to diagnose patients earlier, uh, to treat them more effectively, and to treat them more non-invasively so that they have better quality of life. One out of three heart-lung transplants are done here at Stanford. Patients come from across the country, across the world, to have their procedures done here at Stanford. Well, as you can imagine, heart-lung transplants are more complicated than heart transplants alone. And it had been that every center would do maybe one, maybe two of these procedures a year. The combinations of our very aggressive heart program and our very aggressive lung program, we started taking on more and more of these cases. So now that more patients are coming from all over the country and all over the world, as you mentioned, to have their procedures done here is because now we've done so many of them compared to other centers in the country. How often do you run into these stories, these patients with these really hard luck diagnoses? Unfortunately, a lot. Um, I think that, that even in patients who have had heart disease for a long time, I think that after you've had to, that disease for a long time, it takes a burden not on you, but on your family. When people come in, usually they bring their families with them to talk about this because it's something that they haven't really heard much about before. They've yeah. been living with their heart failure and their family has been living with their heart failure and watching them get sicker over time and they're looking for answers and looking for uh, a way out of their current condition. One of the more complicated cases that, that we saw is uh, a patient who required combined heart liver transplant and the family came from far away uh, to us. Uh, he had congenital heart disease and had struggled for his whole life with a number of different surgeries. And uh, we decided to go through 
a heart liver transplant, and it was a complex surgery, and it uh, took a while of him recovering in the hospital, but we eventually got him back home again. And it's sort of nice to see those stories where people didn't think they had much of an opportunity to, to do well, and we were able to help them in the end. And lastly here, I always bring it back to the patient. What is it that Stanford can offer as opposed to other hospitals or clinics across the country when it comes to your heart and lungs? Well, I mean, I think it's the comprehensive care. Uh, I think that we don't necessarily have a preconceived notion when you come to see us in, in clinic. We try and assess what your needs are, and maybe it's not transplant or one of these heart pumps or even surgery. Maybe it's just that we need to work on your medical therapy a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people that transplants and some of the other aggressive things we do are all great therapies and a big proponent of those things. But if we can just make some relatively simple changes and have you feel pretty good, then that's the best option. It's all about your heart. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Jeff Tudorberg, the Chief of Heart Failure and Heart Transplantation here at Stanford, and also the President of the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplantation.